The movie begins with a scene at a gas station. A guy named Nick, putting aside his crutches, helps a boy pull a cherished toy out of a slot machine. After a long drive, the group of guys stops at a motel. They get a message from a hacker named Nomad, who constantly hacks into operating systems. The university accuses the guys of hacking into the servers, and pins the responsibility on the students. Nick and Jonah lock themselves in the bathroom to figure out the hacker's whereabouts. At this point, Nomad hacks into the laptop camera and sends a picture of the guys. This implies the fact that all the technology is under the hacker's surveillance. The guys spend the night in the bathroom recording the codes and find out Nomad's whereabouts. It turns out he lives in Nevada, where they are going to drive through on their way home. Their search is interrupted by a girl named Haley, urging them to go to bed. The next day, the guys hit the road again, planning to take Haley home to California. But on the way, they get another picture from Nomad. It shows the girl's red car, and it greatly alarms the company. The hacker keeps tracking the students' geolocations and stalks the guys. The guys stop at the gas station again and negotiate a route they plan to track Nomad down. Jonah starts writing codes to find out more information about the hacker. In the meantime, Nick goes to the gas station to buy coffee. Haley asks Jonah about Nick's feelings for the girl and his opinion on moving to California. The guy doesn't say anything and doesn't want to broach the subject of his friend's relationship. The conversation is interrupted by Nick falling down near a gas station. The guys help him grab crutches and get up. Jonah leaves the couple alone and is about to move the car. Haley and her boyfriend head out to get some new coffee. They decide to stop in Nevada right away so they don't waste any time. Haley goes off to sink her quarry, as the girl feels like the relationship is ending. Nick finds the girl and they strike up a conversation about continuing their love. The guy offers to take a pause in the relationship, as he doesn't know what will happen to his legs next and doesn't want to become a burden on the girl. He realizes that he can't be a support and strong shoulder for Haley, as his future is projected to be in a wheelchair. The girl cries and throws away their pendants. They get back in the car and continue on their way. The navigator leads the guys to an abandoned house when it is already dark outside. They realize that no one lives in the house. Haley is left in the car, but the guys decide to take a camera and look around the abandoned house. The windows are broken out, the doors are taped shut, and the whole house is filled with unnecessary junk. The guys find an open basement and decide to go downstairs. They find old server racks and lots of wires. Moments later, the guys hear Haley screaming and quickly run out to the car. The car stands with the lights on and the doors open, the radio working intermittently, but the main trouble is Haley's absence. The guys look around and notice something strange lifting the girl into the air. They are surrounded by the girl's unbearable screams, and afterwards, consciousness is lost. Nick wakes up in a wheelchair being carried by something in a white spacesuit. Consciousness begins to return a little, which terrifies the guy. IVs are placed to his arms, but further events deny him any awareness of what is happening. A man in a white spacesuit sits across from him and turns on the recorder, beginning to ask strange questions about the signals. The doctor tells no information and ignores counter-questions. The man says that he is a representative of a scientific project and, according to their data, the company of guys, made contact with an EBO, an extraterrestrial biological object. Nick is transported to a bright room, where he notices a broken coat on his wrist. The guy tries to examine his legs, but they are wrapped in a sheath, which he is unable to remove. The next day, Nick is brought in again to talk to a man in a white spacesuit. The guy tries to find out some information about Haley, but all urges are ignored. The man only promises that his friends are in good hands and help the investigation. The interview is conducted under a lie detector, where Nick is shown the camera footage. It clearly shows the chair that Jonah later took, and with it a certain creature watching the guys from under the bushes. The guy realizes that what was watching them was definitely not a hacker. Suddenly Nick hears Jonah's voice and finds himself in a vent. Their conversation is quickly cut short and the boy finds himself back in a room with a scientist in a white spacesuit. He is being tested on his ability to think and recognize colors and shapes. Nick is angry because he is being treated like a small child and tells all the information to the man. He achieves a meeting with Haley, but the girl's chart is blank and she does not regain consciousness. All questions about her condition are ignored by the scientist. In the evenings, the guys try to communicate through the vents and find out more information. They make an escape plan, because they don't intend to stay here for long. Jonah is in no mood to run away from the hospital, for he fears and believes they are infected by an alien creature. The conversation abruptly cuts off, and Jonah only manages to tell his friend that he can't feel his hands at all. During another experiment in the laboratory, something happens and Nick witnesses the commotion. Large black stains appear on the wall from an unknown creature. 
he finds himself back in the room with the scientist in the white spacesuit, and tries to find out about the situation. Of course, all of his questions are ignored and silenced. The man admits that all conversations through the vent with Jonah have been overheard. But he assures that the voice was just a hallucination of the guy's weak mind, because Jonah was not found near the abandoned house. Nick manages to escape the ward and pick up Haley from the ICU. The guy straps the girl's bed to the wheelchair and tries to get out of the building quickly, but he fails. After a while, the guy regains consciousness in the ward with Haley. The girl also regains consciousness, but not for long at all. The staff of the Science Center approach Nick's bed and push him down. As he falls, the guy finally sees his legs out of the envelope. Huge metal prostheses from his hip. Behind the glass above the guy, the scientists are watching and trying to calm him down as much as possible, because it was the legs that sparked the scientific interest. Nick doesn't listen to the scientists' explanations and tries to accept the situation. He tries to get up and rewind his legs with a sheet to go, and he succeeds. The guy doesn't respond to the scientists' instructions and commands, because he felt the strength and movement in his own legs. He takes out the door and grabs Haley's bed, heading for the exit from the hospital. The man in the spacesuit tries to calm and stop the couple, warning that his body will be very difficult on the surface. He repeats about biological bodies and the Earth's dangers, but Nick ignores the scientists' advice. The couple escapes from the lab to Earth, finding themselves in the middle of the wilderness. The girl finally comes to her full senses, but behaves strangely. Nick and Haley get to the highway and stop the first car. They ask to be driven to the nearest gas station. A silly situation ensues in the car, an elderly woman sits behind the wheel, who keeps asking strange questions, making strange noises and saying strange words to Nick that scare him. They quickly get there and stop at a gas station. The guy leaves Haley at the gas station for the trucks and tries to contact Jonah himself. He goes into the gas station bar to make a phone call, but instead of information, he learns there is no connection. At this point, he sees Haley climb into the truck and drive away from the parking lot. The guy tries with all his might to catch up with the truck, but the car knocks him over and speeds away. Nick notices a surge of strength in his legs, as in the CPR moment. The guy catches up with the truck, which Haley managed to take, so they were going in the right direction. The guys are happy, they decide with all their might to get out of the strange town and end the adventure. They drive some distance and the track breaks off, all they see next is a deaf desert, with a deep mountain canyon separating them from it. The Science Center begins a search for the couple, reviewing security cameras and inviting the elderly woman who drove the young men to a gas station for personal information. During a conversation with the scientists, it becomes clear that the woman is probably an ally of the lab or has also previously been used as a biological object. She was constantly stuttering and stopping halfway through the conversation, and her nose was constantly bleeding. Nick decides to turn the car around and drive in the other direction, leaving them hoping to find a way out, but they see the canyon again. The couple decides to look around and spot an empty house with a phone booth. The connection is out again and there is no way to make a phone call. In the middle of the house they find a huge map with unknown terrain, which confuses them even more. Evening falls. Nick and Haley decide to spend the night in the house, and in the morning they figure out the map and get out of town. They start hearing footsteps and hide in the far corners of the room. The guy armed with empty dishes tries to track down who got into the abandoned house. That person turns out to be their friend Jonah. The guy can't understand that he finally met his friends and, upon regaining consciousness, begins to talk. In the intervening time he had completely lost track of what was happening and did not believe that he would meet real people. Jonah says that they've become test subjects in a big scientific experiment and it's unlikely they'll be able to get out of the city. The guy confesses that he has been feeling very bad lately and thinks something important has been taken from him. During the whole conversation Jonah does not take off his spacesuit, he only takes off his helmet. At the end of the conversation, the guy cries and admits that instead of his hands, the scientists put metal prostheses, just like Nick's legs. Early in the morning, the guys examine the map and try to find a way out of the city. They travel a short distance, after which they are blocked by a whole team of people in spacesuits. Nick and Haley hide in the corner of the truck, and Jonah tries to pass as an employee in a white spacesuit. The plan doesn't work and the guy's intentions quickly dissipate. Jonah tries to get through the blocked road, but is unsuccessful. A concrete pole appears under the truck, through which it is impossible to drive, as it fixes the wheels. The guys get out of the truck and hide from the officers. Jonah thinks of a plan and asks them to run away at his command. Jonah's prosthetic strength, allows him to destroy the pole and bring down the army of employees, this gives a little time for the pair to escape. Haley and Nick drive off down the highway along the town, but they are blocked again by the staff team. This time the team is heavily fortified, and the truck, can't get over the obstacles and flips over. 
Haley hits the wall of the truck hard, the girl is taken to the emergency room. Nick stands in front of his supervisor, who supervised him while he was in the lab. The scientist explains to the guy what's going on and where they ended up, Nick has become the best test subject of the experiment, bringing together human will and alien technology. He notices a small badge on the scientist's spacesuit with the inscription, Damon. When read backwards, the inscription gives the name of the hacker the guys were looking for. Nick begins to realize that the hacking of the systems was not created by hackers, but by an alien intelligence, which took the students to alien research. The guy gets very angry, and doesn't accept what's happening as reality. He picks up a lot of speed with his alien prosthetics and runs down the track, hoping to find a portal out of the city. At great speed, he breaks through the alien dome and finds himself in a huge dark room. Nick sees a room filled with a variety of servers, but can't find his way back to reality. He turns around and realizes that the only way out is to go back to the laboratory to the man in the white spacesuit. The scientist, in turn, removes his helmet and demonstrates the alien head invention, where only a human face and many wires are present.